What's up, people? Hold on. Put that on. I don't need people calling me in the middle of my my video. Welcome to another Let's Discuss Realist video vlogging series. Most genuine vlogging series. I say it because I can back it up. But today, we're going to talk about something that I think a lot of people who've gotten to know me over the past year or two, um, you know, they see me complain about certain things involving fighting games. taking a turn, in my opinion, for the worse. I mean, and amongst all the reasons that we can muster up together, be it the way the the game was introduced, the, you know, first impressions of the game, um, the characters that they select to put in these games, uh, the these comeback systems, the way that they make the characters, just a, a just a long list of things. There's one thing that always stood out to me the most, and you know, again, people who see me talk about it in other people's streams, whether it be on Twitch or on YouTube or like what have you, it's always been the same issue for me. And that issue was one button, one button mash combos. One button combos is completely bullshit and in this let's discuss I'm actually going to explain to you why I have a hard time supporting fighting games that have one button push combos in them you know so in order to understand where I'm coming from I'm gonna need some of y'all to understand where I come from that being the case uh um I come from, you know what I'm saying, like the Knights, right? How you doing? I was born in the 90s when fighting games really started to take their first steps, really, you know? Fighting games had, you know, a place, you know, they've had past fighting games before then, you know, like the original Street Fighter back in 87, uh, which was a year before I was born. Uh, they had games like Activision's Boxing, which is, you know, that's a fighting game. Even though it was only, you know, one button push back then, that was the, that's the way they made the joystick. So they had an excuse for that. Uh, but coming up during the time when fighting games really be start, started to gain ground um, was around the time of video games like Street Fighter 2. You know, that was the first fighting game that really put fighting games on the map on a competitive level at that. You know, you didn't really have competitive, uh, like, competitive Street Fighter or competitive fighting game tournaments until Street Fighter 2 came out, the original Street Fighter 2. And that's when things really became prominent. You know, it, 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 it was a time where you know, you didn't have access to the um, to the character special moves. That didn't come until like later when they started putting it on the perimeter of the screen, uh, on the frame of the screen, the character special moves. And um, you know, that's the that's the era that I come from. You couldn't just one button push your way to a victory. It was bad enough that you could, you know spam your way to victory in some of these games, but one button push your way to victory, that's that's unheard of. And when it comes right down to it, it's like they're catering to people who have no real interest in playing their games to begin with. Because who in their 
right mind who really plays fighting games is going to sit there and do one button push combos and actually think that shit is going to work. You know, it dumbs down the series and it dumbs down the competition that's around it because your game has this. Not by much because the competitive players don't, don't really use that, but it still causes problems for say king of fighters 14 right let's do it there because even though it was in you know games like the, the persona for ultimax arena um, i don't really count games like that though only because the history th th that series to my knowledge never had a fighting game franchise you know what i mean so they when they made their first fighting game they did it the way that they wanted to do it it wasn't already established what you know what there was to expect and uh you know it was it wasn't until king of fighters 14 came out that i really started to notice like what is this bullshit like why do they have me pushing one button and a full combo comes out even though it's not the most damaging it's still stupid because I'm looking at this from a business standpoint as well as the competitive standpoint. It's not really, it's, I guess, depending on what your goals are, but the way that I'm seeing it, it's not good for business. And when it's not good for business, it's, it's going to end up not being good for comp good for competition. You know, because you're push, you're driving away the the communities that made these games into something, the people that even wanted to bother putting, to, to putting together tournaments before these companies even decided they wanted to put together tournaments. It was the people that decided that, you know, okay, we see how this game works. Let's see who's the best. And let's, uh, you know what I'm saying? Let's put some money up. Let's put bragging rights up. Let's put up these different things that matter at the time. Uh, well, money is still, you know, bragging rights and money still matter, but not, not as much as it did back then, I would say. But when you have characters in your roster, and every, one of the, and every last single one of the characters plays exactly the same, right? Is, would you consider that game fun? Because there would be there would be no variety. You wouldn't consider that fucking game to be fun. Because it's like the same... I mean, they might have little technical differences, but you, you play the... Every character has the same uh, button schemes and button maps. The same... Uh, the same inputs for, for their special moves. It's no fun. So when you have a fighting game that has all those elements, plus they have one button mash combos in it, that's a turnoff. And then you look at it from the business standpoint. Yeah, they're marketing it towards, you know, like I said, the, the reason, and I've said this before, when you look at the one button mash combos, the people who they're marketing that towards or the people who never played fighting games before. And regardless if, you know, the, the combos are damaging or not, that's really not as much of a problem as people think it is. Because the main focus is just that it's in the system, period. That's the, that's the problem. Now, we've seen this in, you know, Persona 4, but I don't really count that one, but King of Fighters, a series that never had one button push combos before. I mean, that counted like the ones on the handheld system because they only had like two buttons, but still, you had to input a series of buttons. You couldn't just one button mash your way into a full combo. And even then, even if you want to look at games like, um, video games like the Tekken series, you know what I mean? You had characters, even now. You know, you got characters like Katarina, 
who's basically a beginner character. Uh, you know, I guess a, a step up from her would be kind of like um, Warang, because he's he has one button push combos. You know, even though they're not the most efficient, they're still, in, you know, but not every character plays like that, though. You know what I mean? Like, not every character has that one button push combo system that makes you say, well, damn, this is all it takes to perform a combo? Like, there's no actual skill involved in this. So when you dumb down the skill of your game, it becomes less and less attractive to the point where... People don't want to play it because the game itself. They play it because of the legacy of the game. Kind of like what's going on with uh, with games like Street Fighter V. You know, Street Fighter V across the board is a worse game than its its predecessors. It's a worse game than its predecessors because they made things more. Basically, like they dumbed down the game. Now, granted, they didn't do one button mash combos, you know, but they purposely made the game bad in eras so that other people who weren't as good as the game in the game can have a chance to win at these tournaments. And that's the truth. Like, I can go on all the details about the, how the game got like 6.5 frames of lag and um, how. They keep on talking about how they're trying to nerf uh, the the uh, straight jab, anti-air, normal attacks. You know what I mean? Like, that should have never been in Street Fighter. That should have never been in any Street Fighter game ever. Like, but, but they never fi- actually fix it. Even with this past patch, they never fixed it. It's just, you know, like the more you, the, 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 like the more you look at it, the more it becomes apparent that these games aren't meant to be played with that type of system. You know, with that, with, with that type of button map, that one button, like, like, it's just ridiculous overall. And then, when you look at games that's gaining traction from that, even with the failure of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, that, that one right there being like the biggest shocker probably to anybody, you know, that a Marvel vs. Capcom game would die, you know what I mean? When you have past Marvel vs. Capcom games that are still relevant, you know, um, then when you look at a game like King of Fighters again, I kind of, I kind of got sidetracked, but. A series that has never had a one-button push combo system. You know, you take people who played those games in the past, and then they played King of Fighters 14. That's going to throw them through a loop that they dumped it down so much. Like, why are you, you know, why are you basically breastfeeding people with this simple shit? How come they just can't learn the combos like regular people? Like, what's the purpose of dumbing it down like that? Because they're marketing it to an audience that really don't care to play fighting games at all. So if they don't care to play fighting games at all, they're not going to care to keep the game. More than likely, nine times out of ten, they're not going to like. They're not going to want to keep the game, and they're going to return it to the store to get their the money back. So now that you did that, like you can't count that sale as profit because you're not really making. Like you got to give that money back. So when it comes right down to it, you're catering to a group of people who won don't care to really support the, the competitive scene that the game that game's community is uh, is accompanied by two, like you're not really making any profit off of the games and three overall like it just dumbs down the competition of yeah. the game. <laughs> Come on. But, uh, like, at the end of the day, like, it's not worth it. It's not healthy. Because, for the sake of business, like, imagine this. How many of us have been playing 
games like Mortal Kombat, when playing games like um, video games like Street Fighter, and even with games like Tekken, with the exception of characters like, you know, saying like War Wrong and also with characters like Katarina and things like that. Um, imagine if the day, if one button push combos for some reason ends up becoming so profitable just to that demographic, right? Imagine if imagine the day when games like Tekken 7 or like maybe Tekken 8 or Tekken 9 or with uh with video games like uh with video games like Street Fighter um 6 or maybe even Street Fighter 7. You know, imagine those games with one button push Mortal Kombat. Imagine Mortal Kombat with a one button push combo system. Like you know what I mean? Like imagine that. You mean to tell me that that's actually going to be good for business? Cuz they're going to be seeing the the more these one button push combo games get supported, the more other businesses are going to that make fighting games are going to look at that and be like, "Well, maybe this is a viable option." I mean, unless they just have some pride to them and they decide not to, you know, not to just, you know what I'm saying, like go with the status quo. You know what I mean? Like they're going to follow suit. Because you're going to have people who are going to start complaining that the one button push combos aren't in those games and how hard they are. And it just dumbs down the overall experience of the game. Like fighting games weren't meant to be so simple like that. It's a reason why fighting games are, are easily the most difficult games in the world. And I, I stand by that. Because not only do you have to worry about what your character is doing, like you got to find a character that fits your playstyle, whether you are more of like a hit and run type of person, whether you're like a keep away type of person, whether you're a person that likes to fight from a distance and like to zone out the opponent, whether you're somebody that likes to be more of a rush down character, whether your character likes to be more so aerial or whatever, you know what I mean? Like it's different ways to play the game and you have a character that caters to that to that style of play but with that comes different inputs that you have to learn with that comes different special moves that you have to learn different elements to that character alone you have to see how how you know you basically got to develop the muscle memory and all that so that that character fits your play style and that you can execute your combos with precision and not only that you have to focus on not only what your character can do but you also have to focus on what your opponent's character can do and how well your character matches up to that character and how much more effort you're going to have to put in against the character that you're going up against. Like, it's so much depth to fighting games that it's a reason why a lot of people that are picking up games like Dragon Ball Fighters, picking up games like... Uh, like, like King of Fighters 14, picking up games like Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. They never played the past ones. They just heard that, oh, look, we got easy mode combos in, in the game, and, you know, you can just push one button and do a full-on combo, and now all of a sudden that's, like, you know, like the thing to do. Like, it doesn't bode well for competition, and in the long run, it doesn't mean good for business. I mean, they get they, they may get their initial profits off of it, but it's not going to be supported long term, like other games will. You know, like other games from the past have done. You know, it's a reason why games like Marvel vs. Capcom Two and Marvel vs. Capcom Three they still have a solid tournament scene. You know, it's a reason why you have people that would much rather play Ultra Street Fighter Four. And they're only playing video games like, well, even though it's not one button push combos, but still, it's it's dumbed down. You know what I mean? And it doesn't it doesn't benefit people in the long run to have that type of system in the game. Like, I know people said, you know, various other reasons why people don't support certain games like that. You know, many games have many people have stopped playing Street Fighter Five because. I think they're playing it more so off of the fact that it's Street Fighter. You know what I'm saying? It's a legacy that comes with that game. Most of us played Street Fighter growing up as kids. 
you know, and who would have thought today that, you know, you didn't want to play Street Fighter? You know, it's a new Street Fighter out. That's the latest version. I got to play that if I want to play Street Fighter. You know, and it's hard not to support that because you, a lot of us have such an emotional connection to Street Fighter. You know what I mean? It's like we grew up with that game. And it's kind of like having to say goodbye to like your best friend, you know, that you've been friends with for like since you were kids. You know what I mean? It's it's a hard thing to do to just to just drop that game. It's not easy. It's just one of those things where it's like I hope that it doesn't come so bad. Like I hope people see that these one button push combos are not healthy. You know what I mean? Like it's not healthy for competition. It's not healthy for business. You don't want to keep those type of systems in your game and end up having to, uh, you know, cater to people who just won't support your game in the long run. Like the, like the hardcore fan bases and the hardcore communities that developed the, that we pretty much just developed the, like the notoriety for that game. You know what I'm saying? Like where would Street Fighter be as a, as a series? Where would Street Fighter be if people didn't do like those fighting game tournaments? Where would games like Mortal Kombat be if people didn't go out and support it and kept the spirit of uh, Mortal Kombat alive? You know what I mean? Like, it's just like a number of things, a number of reasons. And I'm not, you know, like, I'm not a big multitasker. <laughs> so I'm trying to, I was trying to walk and talk at the same time. And I probably skipped over a lot of the points that I wanted to make. And I know as soon as I get back home, I'm, I'm going to remember them. But, uh, and I'm, I'm, I may have been all over the place as well, but it's really something that I would like to see discontinued in the future. Because it, it persuades people not to actually try to play the game the way you actually intended for it to be played. You know? just for the rookies that's not going to fully support it in the long run, they're going to buy it initially, they're going to play it a little bit, and then they're just going to give it up, you know what I mean, and then they're going to go return it to the store, you know, it is a turn off, and when more notable games that have been around longer, more notable fighting games that have been around longer, begin to pick up these habits, God forbid they don't. But in the event that they do, they start in the event that these companies start seeing traction with these one button push combo systems, and then they start saying, "Okay, well, in order for us to maximize profit, we got to put this in our game." You know what I'm saying? Like, where does that leave the competition? You know what I'm saying? Why are you catering to people who never bothered to play a fighting game ever in their life before and won't care to play it? You know, two months from now. You know what I'm saying? That was the as much as people don't want to admit it, that was a reason why Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite failed. Because there's no actual competition in the game. I mean, on top of the fact that characters, you know what I'm saying, sales, once word get around that certain things happen in this game and people don't like it, they're going to not buy the game. Like I told myself, I, I, I've told plenty of people, and some, even some of you guys, if Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite if I would have known that that game had one button push combos in it, I would have never bought it. The character roster wasn't a problem for me as much, as much as it was for other people because they don't understand like the business aspect of it in the past. Like with, uh, with like the X-Men being left out and things like that, people don't really understand that it was like a business move, you know, with Disney and that whole, uh, and that whole issue that made it hard for Capcom, I mean, that made it hard for Marvel, excuse me, to put those characters in Marvel, in Marvel versus Capcom. You know, it was a business thing, uh, 
deal to just, you know what I'm saying? It was just a bunch of messed up stuff going on at that time. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's not something that uh, I support. And it makes it hard to support games that I, I, it's a piece of me that wants to buy certain games. Games like Dragon Ball Fighters. I'm teetering so hard on wanting to buy that game. But when it comes right down to it, the only reason why I want to buy it is because I'm a fan of, I'm a, I'm a Dragon Ball Z fan. I've been a Dragon Ball Z fan since Dragon Ball when I was a little kid. You know, I remember when Goku did his first Kamehameha. I remember when he went up against characters like General Blue. I remember Android 8. I remember, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I remember, like, the Red Ribbon Army when they, you know, when they first got introduced. I remember these things. I grew up with that series all the way up to GT and even through Super. You know what I mean? Like, it's just been a part of my life growing up. And I like the idea that they took a, the Dragon Ball characters and they turn it into a, a playable fighting game. But one thing, I, it's, it's hard to me to look at that and be like, okay, one button push combos. Like, you know, like that's, that's kind of ridiculous. I mean, if, if people grow up in like a fucked up environment, they're not gonna understand why the elders or the people that came before them are mad that the environment is the way it is. Because it, it's normal to you. And you have people that's coming up right now that are playing these fighting games and they're thinking this is how fighting games are supposed to be. And if that mentality takes over, then fighting games that never had anything like that before are gonna start having it. And that's just when competition is gonna get dumbed down even more. You know? I, I have a hard time supporting games like that for that reason. For, because of that fear. You know. um, but that's all I want to say. Uh, I know this thing cuts off at like 30 minutes per video. And I didn't want it to go that long anyway. But, um, but most definitely, it's one of those things where I want to... Uh, just wanted to express my opinion on, even though I may not have expressed it the best that I could, you know, uh, I think people still understand where I'm coming from when I say I don't support those games. And as much as I want to get Dragon Ball Fighters, it's hard for me to get it knowing that that system is in there. No, knowing what it could become, and I refuse to support that. You know what I mean? So, that's basically, uh, that's basically it. So, yeah, man. So thank you guys for watching me ramble. Um, you know, and let the let the discussion continue in the comments. You know, like I said, I didn't get everything I wanted to say out, but I think I got my point across enough to where people understand why I don't support it. You know, that doesn't mean other people won't support it. It's just that I I just can't see myself supporting something something that has those type of systems. In it. You know, fighting game is supposed to take a little bit of skill. When you dumb down the skill, it makes the fighting game less attractive. You know, regardless of how damaging the combos are, it's just when it gets dumbed down, it becomes less attractive and less people want to play it. You know, so. And I'm one of those people. So that's it, man. Thanks for watching. Peace. Like, comment, subscribe, all of the crazy stuff that people like to remind you of. And uh, I'll see you guys for the next Let's Discuss. Until then, peace. Keep on gaming.